It's the 25th anniversary of the Disney Cruise Line. So we're sailing on the oldest ship. Hey, man, fam, we're getting ready to set sail on the Disney Magic for the Silver Anniversary at Sea Cruise. Super excited to enjoy some of the special festivities. Plus, neither of us have been on this ship before, so excited to check out the dining. We've got some fun activities booked at Castaway Key. 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 We got days okay. to figure that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're coming with us? It's time to have asked. Oh, we have asked. A <laughs> couple of housekeeping notes. Make sure you do online check-in as soon as possible for your Disney cruise. This will allow you to select your preferred arrival time at the port. When you arrive at the port, you will need a QR code that they send to you via email, so make sure you've got that handy. You will also need some sort of proof of citizenship. For us, it's passports, but make sure you check based on where you're from, what each port needs. It may vary by cruise destination as well. You will drop your luggage off with the porters. Make sure you bring and attach the luggage tags that Disney Cruise Line will mail to your home. Also, pro tip, have some cash to tip these folks. The boarding process is down to a science. It's usually pretty quick and easy, but make sure you know your luggage will not be available right away, even if your room is. That means anything you want to bring on board with you, such as a swimsuit in case you want to swim, any important medication, you need to pack that in your carry-on. Last but not least, adults 21 and up are able to bring on board two bottles of wine and or champagne or a six pack of beer, but that also needs to go in your carry-on. And enough about the logistics, let's get on the magic. Disney Magic, please welcome the McCormack family. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Wow. This is a gorgeous lobby. It's so much smaller than the other ones. Look, Pluto's up there. Oh, it looks adorable. First up, we're going to head to our room to drop off our carry-ons, midship elevators. I missed you. It's good to see you again. <laughs> the last cruise we were on was the Wish, and while it was a lovely ship with a lot of fun stuff, they did not have midship elevators, which meant waiting a long time for elevators. Or stairs. Lots of stairs. I love the little detail of the Mickey hand being what tells you what floor they're on. Oh, That's adorable. The sad part is he's not moving any closer to us yet. That but, one uh, is well, no. You know, I sailed on the Wonder when I was 13, so I don't remember much of it, but I do remember it looking a lot like this. Oh. You can also definitely sense that this is a smaller and older ship than the ones we've been on more recently, the Dream and the Wish. But it's nice, it's quaint. It's still got the beautiful touches of Disney magic everywhere, like in the artwork and the stairwells. It's charming. You wanna know a fun fact? I love a fun fact. So the Wonder is the Magic's sister ship, but the Magic was actually built and commissioned first, mm. but it had its first sailing on July 30th of 1998 after months of construction delays. It was actually commissioned in 95. Oh wow, that did take a long time. All right, shall we see the room? We shall. Aww. Aww. Do you think they know if I'm a silver member yet? I think they think you're the silver member now. <gasps> Huzzah. Look at this cute stuff for being silver. That's adorable. All right, it's time for that rapid fire room tour. We are in a quote, deluxe ocean view stateroom with veranda. Ooh. So this is the third tier of stateroom. Your least expensive are the no window, no view staterooms. And then there are some that have a window and then you move to your uh, veranda and then you move up into your suites and your concierge and things like that. The total cost for our Fortnite cruise, including all the fees and port expenses and everything was just under $3,400. But let's get into the room, first of all. Oh, this is interesting. You don't have to put your key in there. On the Wish and some other ships, you have to put your key in to start the lights. Uh, here's the first half of the bathroom. Of course, on a cruise line, everything is small and compact, but I do like that the toilet is separate from the shower and you also get two sinks. Love that they brought a makeup wipe situation and we still haven't run out of H2O products. Behind me is the closet with our life jackets. Speaking of which, our mustard drill. We are mustard station I. Safe laundry bag, hangers, a little more room on this side, more storage. Aw, Walt and Lily on a ship with a Mickey Mouse. Well, that's just precious. Again, here are the goodies we got for being silver castaway members. They're specialty uh, ones for the silver anniversary at sea. So cute little lanyard to keep your passes in in a bag. Dads, here's your thermostat. Full length mirror, very important. Also, I love the lamps. 
next to the bed. It has all the castles for all the Disney parks around the world and then all the cruise ships on there. How cute. Obviously, this is the bed, and if you ask for it, you can opt to turn the couch into a sleeper as well. More storage. <gasps> oh my gosh. Mark Davis, Pirates of the Caribbean sketch. Pirates is my favorite Disney ride. And Mark's one of my favorite Imagineers. Oh my God, this is awesome. Day made, we haven't even sailed yet. Artwork, music notes for Candle on the Water from Pete's Dragon. Mirror, vanity, more drawers, small fridge, TV. And now here is the veranda, which has a beautiful view of Miami right now. But tomorrow, nay, in mere hours, much lovelier view. So there you have it. Pretty standard for a cruise room. Is that comfortable? I think definitely a little bit smaller than the rooms on previous ships, but I think it'll be perfect for four nights. And now I'm hungry. Lunch? Yeah. Never seen you get up so fast. <laughs> Made it up to deck nine where we're looking for cabanas, which is the buffet for some lunch. <gasps> Goodbye. Here. Okay. First Buzz Lightyear and now a shark. Things are going well. Cabana's is the buffet restaurant on deck nine open for breakfast and lunch. There are some other stands up by the pool deck that serve things like burgers and chicken tenders, but you're gonna find a bigger variety here at Cabana's. Checking out the offerings today, we had some classics like macaroni and cheese, chicken tenders, fish and chips, some other seafood dishes, fries. And note, this is gonna change meal by meal and day by day. We also had a couple pasta dishes, including a fancy version of mac and cheese. We both have the lamb, very little bit sauce. You like lab, don't you, sweetheart? Also some steak, asparagus, mashed potatoes. Ooh, a variety of focaccia breads. Also have a couple carving stations. Here we have a cold seafood bar with crab legs and cocktail shrimp and oysters. We've also got a variety of dips and salads. Lots to choose from. Ooh, and the daily special today is a noodle and lo mein bar. So you've got a variety to choose from. There's pork lo mein, veggie fried rice, and then different toppings you can add if you'd like to. And of course, there's tons of desserts to choose from, like this really cute celebration cupcake, all. But there's also mousses and cheesecakes and jellos, fresh fruit, all kinds of stuff. On to beverages, there's a variety of sodas, coffee, tea, juice, water. As a pro tip, make sure you bring a nice big tumbler on board so you can refill that and bring it back to your room or your table or the poolside. This is one thing that's unique about Disney Cruise Line, as on a lot of cruise lines, you have to pay extra for a soda package, but it's all included here on DCL. Lunch at Cabana's, check. You know, Cabana's is a pretty average buffet. Some mm -hmm. of the food is not bad, some of it's not great. You know, but all of it is available for you to eat. That's true, unless you have an allergy. Yeah, yeah, we don't condone that. What was the highlight on your plate today? I think it was the combination steak into focaccia sandwich. Oh, that was a nice invention the you made. The only thing that I wish I had done differently is I wish I had grabbed the horseradish sauce. Mm. What about you? Mm, chicken tenders. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I thought that goes without saying. For some reason, Disney Cruise Line chicken tenders are legendary and they are so good. I don't know why, but they are also the mac and cheese, both the classic and the mushroom well, were quite tasty. Mm. And now we're doing a little exploring. The Buena Vista Theater's here. Ooh, um, I believe they're gonna be showing New Little Mermaid one day, and I would like to see it. Buena Vista Theater, they do movies, and like I was just saying with Little Mermaid, they're newer movies. Like they had Quantumania, they had some of the new Disney Plus shows, they had Avatar 2, so you can check a movie out there. But our goal right now is to go to the Oceaneer Club, which is for children, which we are not, nor do we have. But it still looks cool. Aww. Aww, Andy's room. Only on day one can people that are not allowed in the kids' clubs go to the kids' clubs, which is not kids, basically. And we <laughs> just want to look at them because they look cool. <laughs> Fun. I'm glad you enjoyed the slide. Yes, I had to wait my turn. Not, not everyone was waiting their turn. 
<laughs> I think it's more of a free-for-all experience, if I'm being honest. Well, I didn't think it'd be a good look if I, like, pushed a kid out of the way to go down the Toy Story slide. I agree. I don't think Manu would forgive you. <laughs> She's so cute. But the kids' clubs are definitely a reason a lot of people like bringing their families on Disney Cruise Line. They have a nursery. We were in the Oceaneer Club, which I believe is 3 to 12. And then there's like a preteen club and then there's a teen club. I remember when I came on The Wonder when I was 13, I like never wanted to see my family. Uh, but they're they're fun and you can sign your kids up for activities and that is the extent of my knowledge on that. But I do know kids seem to have fun and that we as adults cannot go except for on day one. But I'm pretty jealous because they had some cool Marvel stuff too. All right, headed to the mandatory mustard drill. I'm sorry, did you just call it mustard drill? Yeah, I'm more of a ketchup drill fan, but they don't have those. The mustard drill has now been completed, and we're headed. Want to hear a fun mustard drill fact? Sure. I actually have two mustard drill facts. One, it's because of the Titanic that we have mustard drills. So I guess technically you could blame Captain E.J. Smith. My second fun fact is actually about lifeboats. Prior to Disney, all lifeboats had to be bright orange, but that didn't match the Disney aesthetic, and they wanted to be the iconic yellow color of Mickey's shoes. So they had to prove to the sea patrol people, whoever that may be, that yellow could be just as seen as orange from a distance in case of needing lifeboats. They approved that, and now any company can use yellow lifeboats, but you'll see those iconic Mickey-colored lifeboats aboard. And now for one of the great Disney traditions, the sail-away party. It normally happens out on the pool decks, however, due to inclement weather, it's been brought inside, so we're hoping to get a glimpse of Mickey and the gang in their awesome 25th anniversary outfits, and I'd love to hear that When You Wish Upon a Star horn. Let's hope we can hear it inside. All right, let's gear up. beautiful outside, but Sailor Way Party was still adorable indoors. The new outfits are so cute. I'm obsessed with Minnie's pants. I like Mickey's suit, if I'm being honest. Uh, we gotta find them for a picture at some point, obviously. Obviously. But now, the real fun begins, because we're going to happy hour in the adult section. <sighs> Welcome to the adult section on the Magic. It's quite big. It's bigger than the one on the Wish. I think that was one of the common complaints about the Wish, is how small the adult section was. So I'm excited to see how this compares to even when we went on the Dream. We've got a nice pool here, got a couple hot tubs, tons of chairs, there's a bar, there's an adults only coffee shop, and we're gonna go to happy hour. Our cocktails have arrived. Aperol spritz. And an old fashioned. So really nothing has changed. Except for normally I also have an old fashioned, but it feels tropical, it feels boat worthy. Ah. Pretty good Aperol spritz too. Aperol spritzes are Prosecco Aperol, which is a an aperitif from Italy. It's bitter, and then usually some kind of soda water, maybe with some orange or some fruity flavor. But they're more bitter and refreshing than they are sweet, so I love them. Uh, and a fun news is that right now, since it's happy hour, all of these signature beverages as well as beers and wine are 30% off, and we love a bargain. They're basically giving it away. It's like you're going to lose money if you don't get a drink at happy hour. The math is math. How did we know it was happy hour? I'm so glad you asked. When you look at the Disney Cruise Line app, once you're on the ship, you can connect to the Disney Cruise Line Wi-Fi, and that gives you access to all kinds of things on the app. It'll tell you your dinner rotation, it will tell you what times the shows are, character meet and greets, and you can go through and you can favorite a variety of things, and then we'll show up on your plans, which also shows any excursions or specialty dining, et cetera, that you've booked. So when I get on a cruise as soon as I can, I go ahead and look at the app and I favorite a bunch of stuff, any characters I want to meet, any drinks, any trivia, any games, et cetera. And then that way I have it all stored in my plans. And right now my plan is to luxury. <laughs> Well, 
Well, after that incredibly loud horn uh, that scared me out of my skin, I'm going to need a sip of this. So, cheers. To their defense, they did tell us it was going to be loud, but I don't think we believed them as to how loud. A uh, lesson that I don't need to learn twice, <laughs> honestly. This is a good old fashioned. It's sweeter than what I would normally get, but that's because I normally like rye old fashions, which are a little bit spicier and more cinnamony. Um, but it's very tasty and I enjoy it. And I like it more because it's on happy hour or as uh, my receipt says, magical hour. Do you know the nautical flags? Um, not particularly well. Hold on. Research time. And while you wait, viewer enjoy this prolonged view at these three individual flags that we don't know what they represent. The first one is D. Okay. The second one is C. No way. Did they, is this They're last one? L. Is it L? Yeah. DCL? That's, That's hilarious. Awesome. That's amazing. Of course it means that. Of course there's that much detail on here. Why wouldn't there be? Well, it's been an excellent first day so far, but... We've got to go back and get prepped for our show tonight, which is Tangled. Tangled, Tangled the musical tonight, and then our first dinner aboard the Disney Magic. It's at Palace. I'm so excited. I remember going when I was a kid and loving it. So, here we go. All right. That was a good show. Just saw Tangled the Musical. Of course, there's no videoing in the Broadway style shows, but that is one of the big perks of coming on the Disney Cruise Line. Never seen the show before. What did you think? I think they did a great job. I mean, with the projections that they added, the entire effects that we saw throughout the theater, uh, the puppets, oh, Maximus. Yeah. Maximus was awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what's your favorite part of the show, how they adapted it? Maximus. Yeah, he's just really, really good. I actually enjoyed the new songs they added too, which is strange because normally when you add a new song to a show like this, it's hard to, it's hard to want something that you haven't seen before, but this is done really well. Generally speaking, I prefer the shows that are kind of like a mashup of a bunch of Disney characters in movies, which I know we've got one coming another night. However, as far as the single movie adaptations I've seen on the sea, I think this one was pretty good, so I certainly wouldn't miss it. What a shot. All right. First up, headed into Mickey's main sale. This is the main merchandise shop aboard the Disney Magic. This is where you're gonna find shirts and hats and apparel and mugs. But of course, I'm on the hunt for ears. I'm sure they've got other exclusive Disney Cruise Line pairs and I'm on the quest. Okay, not silver anniversary, but this is cute. Captain Mickey sweatshirt, that's adorable. These are interesting, it's ears. But the ears are Mickey and Minnie with their little captain hats on. I don't know if I can pull those off. I have found the ear wall. These are Cruise Line exclusive. Obviously, the red Life Preserver ones are Cruise Line exclusive. And on sale for $8. Oh my god, I don't even like them that much. And I might buy them because they're $8. Mm. <laughs> Mermaid ones, some non-Cruise Line ones. They have the navy ones though. I've had my eye on these for a while. Maybe they're the last pair. Maybe this is the time. And apparently one store wasn't enough, but I'm not here to, oh, it has the 25th anniversary, I see. So to be, to be clear, two pairs of ears? How much is that other there will, no. there will not be two pairs of ears this day. Well, at least not this as a second pair. I don't love the hat. Ah, uh, you prefer the classic bow. I'm a bow girl through and through, and I love the color, but I, I, I don't love the hat. That's fair. And I'm picky. Hey, live your truth. But let's take a gander at the rest of the 25th anniversary collection. We've got a lounge fly, a spirit jersey, a pin, two different necklaces, and a polo, and an earring slash necklace set. Hi, Donna! Oh my god, a queen! Hi, Daisy! <laughs> Hi, Daisy! Oh my gosh! You look so fabulous! Oh, thank you! A queen in this new outfit! Can we get a twirl? Okay, ready? You are so cute! I love this look and the sparkle! She's everything. She's the moment. <laughs> I would love to share someday. We'll have a sleepover and try on each other's outfits. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Can we take it? How should we pose, Daisy? I like to style. Okay. Oh, perfect. One more time. 
We met Daisy in her 25th anniversary outfit, and she's so cute. I love her. She's so fierce. She this serves it. An icon. All of the characters have these adorable teal silver anniversary outfits, and I must meet Mickey and Minnie at some point. I'd I, like to I meet all it, of them, but... Yeah, I think it'll happen. I'm trying to be realistic here. Oh, we can make it happen. Yeah. We have four days, but we're headed to our first dinner, which is Animator's Palette this evening. I am so excited about this. Animator's Palette, they have on the other ships, but it's a different version. And this is the version I remember from being a kid where the restaurant goes from black and white to color, and it's like so magical. I can't wait. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Same. Yeah, I bet you're excited for it to go from we black and white to color. We are going to have the same experience, you and I. Oh. <laughs> Pours goo out on the floor. We're learning so much about some early animated cartoons. Do you think these are real? I sincerely hope they are. I can't tell if they're real or replicas. Anyway. <laughs> we just wrapped at Animator's Palette for our first uh, evening's dinner. So the way dining works on a Disney cruise line are there are sit-down restaurants that everybody is invited to. When you book your cruise, you choose if you'd like early or late seating, and then they assign you which restaurant which night. You are going to have the same servers every night, uh, and you can opt out if you'd rather go to the adult dining. You can do that, but otherwise, when you board, it'll tell you which restaurant to go to which night. We did decide not to film our reviews live at the table to respect our other guests, especially because we are a smaller party, so we were seated with other folks. But don't worry, we took meticulous notes on all of the food we had, and you're going to be hearing that in just a bit. They're not just in my brain, I wrote them down. Yeah, yeah. extensive. <laughs> uh, but we do want to talk about is the experience of Animator's Palette. So spoilers alert, if you haven't been to Animator's Palette on the Magic, and I assume it's the same on the Wonder. It's so wonderful. It was delightful. It's, it's so different it's than what so we had cool. on the Dream. On the Dream and the Fantasy, Animator's Palette is very similar to Turtle Talk with Crush at Epcot or California Adventure where it's sea themed and Crush comes by and he talks to you and he interacts with people at the table which is very, very cool if you don't go to Turtle Talk with Crush regularly. <laughs> which is something that uh, we do. I'm a big fan. Actually though, the last time we were on the Dream, Crush did bring out a Buzz Lightyear doll and I really liked that. But in this version of Animator's Palette, it starts in black and white and becomes color all around you, and it's fantastic. It also begins to animate over time before the even that, so it's like a sketchbook situation, then they add background color, and it, uh, I'm without words, especially because of the finale. Basically, after watching these different characters and scenes be animated for a while, all of a sudden it becomes a montage of different Disney moments from happy ones to sad ones. And by sad ones, I mean they played part of Toy Story 3. So, it wasn't and it's set against the typical music montage as well. So you've got stuff from The Lion King paired with Go the Distance. It is a lot. You got the villains coming out. I wasn't ready for Ursula. But then you have your triumphant moment, because Disney's got the montage down to a science, where it's like, happy, everything's great, the villains are here, now we're sad, but we're going to have our triumphant moment. And they have the triumphant moment to the Fantasmic soundtrack. And Sorcerer Mickey comes out. It's incredible. Not only that, but after doing a wonderful bit of traipsing throughout the restaurant, we have a Peter Pan moment of sprinkle the pixie dust and cast members then come out with Mickey and uh, sort of applaud and wave to all of their sections because, you know. It was a lot for my emotions. I love a montage. I love Mickey Mouse and I love cast members and it was wonderful. That's all three, folks. Yeah, that's a, that's a three first. So Animator's Palette isn't my favorite food-wise on the Disney Cruise, but the experience on this ship and the wonder is awesome. And now we are headed over to the brand new Soul Cat Lounge. But while we walk, uh, how about you enjoy our in depth review? Review. Nice. Yeah. All right, to start it off, let's take a look at the menu. Animator's Palette offers standard American fare. For your appetizers, you have things like the smoked salmon tartare and the sliced serrano ham. There are a variety of soups and salads offers. And for your mains, 
You have items like herb crusted fork chops and the grilled tuna steak. Now they also offer vegetarian and lighter note offerings like the black bean chipotle cakes as well as some jumbo shrimp salads. As far as beverages go, standard drinks such as sodas and coffee are included on a Disney cruise, and they had some specialty beverages, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and of course they have a full bar service. Or you can opt to do the wine package, which we did. There are two tiers of wine packages, classic and premium, and you choose your offering based on how many nights you're going to be aboard the ship. But it's not necessarily a bottle per night each night of your cruise. It's essentially just four bottles for the entirety of your vacation. You're welcome to split bottles between nights. If you'd like to drink a glass at dinner one night, your servers can cork it and bring it to you the next night. You can also use glasses at brunch if you're going to something like Palo. And you can take up to two bottles off the ship. It's a nice offering if you plan on drinking wine for more than one meal. It's something to take a look at. It's fun, too, because you can have the sommelier recommend things to you. We ended up splitting bottles between all of our dinners and our brunch and walked off with a bottle of our favorite red, which can be drunk when you're sad after your cruise. Now on to the food. Start a dinner at Animator's Palette with a focaccia bread and a garlic dip. This is quite delicious, very garlicky, very good focaccia, no complaints here. For my appetizers, I started out with the truffle per sets, but we're gonna talk more about those later. I also got the arugula leaf salad with red beets, orange segments, and marinated white beans with a mustard dressing. Listen, this was a very earthy salad, so if that's not your jam, I'd avoid it. The mustard dressing was a nice acidic counterpoint to all of that earthiness, so it was pretty tasty. I started with the tomato tart with glazed goat cheese and shaved radish. Overall, I think this is a nice appetizer. The crust was flaky. There was a good crunch from the radish. I do wish it had more goat cheese, though. I also got the chicken and walnut salad, which had dried cranberries, red onion, and a cranberry dressing. I personally don't love cold chicken on salad, so I would ask for them to hold that next time. I really liked the cranberry dressing, and overall, it was a fine salad. For my main, I picked up the lemon thyme marinated all-natural chicken breast on top of sour cream mashed potatoes, roasted root veggies, and a grain mustard jus. And the chicken itself was pretty moist with a good bit of lemon and thyme flavor, but the star of the show were the sour cream mashed potatoes. Creamy with a nice taste of sour cream throughout. The only thing I wanted was more of the potatoes. I had maybe two or three spoonfuls, and I would have asked for two to three sides of that just because of how tasty it was. Hey, remember when I mentioned that we were going to talk more about those truffle presets? That time is now. Molly, take it away. After I got done dramatically crying over Mickey's appearance as Sorcerer Mickey to the Fantasmic music, I was handed something even more magical. An entire plate of the truffle presets. That's right. Andre, our fantastic server, hooked it up. I told him those were my favorite thing on the menu, and I asked if I could just have another appetizer for dinner. But not only did he bring me just another appetizer. He brought me a gigantic plateful of the Persets. Now, these things are delightful. They are little pasta pockets shoved full of ricotta cheese, truffle. They've got this light creamy sauce on it, some veggies on top for a crunch, fresh pepper. These are fantastic. Overall, I don't think Animator's Palette's food is that good, but these make it worth it. Also, Sorcerer Mickey. As far as the dessert menu goes, there are a number of beverages that you can purchase for an additional cost, including coffee and some alcoholic beverages. But there are also those desserts that are included, like the chocolate walnut cake or the signature dessert, the lemon icebox pie, which just so happens to be what I got. The lemon icebox pie comes with a lemon curd and a berry cream. And to be honest, I got this because it reminds me of my grandmother. And was this my grandmother's lemon icebox pie? Absolutely not, but it was enough like it to give me a little bit of a memory of her. It had a pretty good lemon flavor, but it was missing the meringue that I really wanted. The berry cream was a nice addition, but overall I'd say this is a pretty mid lemon ice box pie. And I opted for the deconstructed carrot cake, which is described as a classic carrot cake with a twist. The twist? There's a literal carrot ribbon on the plate. <laughs> It's listed as the no sugar added dessert, but I didn't realize there would literally be a vegetable on my dessert plate. That said, it wasn't bad. I thought the cake itself was pretty moist. It tasted more like a muffin or a bread than an actual cake. But after a meal full of cheese and truffle per sets, I was fine with just a few bites of something sweet. Soul Cat Lounge is based on Pixar's movie Soul, and throughout it has tons of references to the film itself. In fact, The artwork on the wall has album covers that were created and drawn by Pixar artists. So you're not going to see any of the musicians' names on the albums themselves, saved one. And that 
is Dorothea Williams, who is actually a character in the movie Soul. There's tons of other cool Easter eggs to look for as well. Right by the stage, you've got Joe Gardner's hat and jacket on a jacket stand. Behind the bar, you've got a picture of Dorothea Williams. You've also got a little clay figurine of 22, Tina Fey's uh... character in the movie. Look at the carpet. It's got all of the jazz instruments kind of in a very animated style, very similar to some things you might see in the movie. And this is really, really cool because as of us filming this, this has been open for like two voyages or something. It's, yeah, it's brand a new. Banana short amount of time. And I'm so pumped to see what's on this menu. Well, lucky for you, Alan, I've already taken a look at the menu because oh. I'm that person that looks at the menus as soon as possible. And two things caught my eye. One, custom tailoring and alterations. This is a table-side presentation of the bartender's special Manhattan and martinis tailored and altered to fit your soul. It's also a reference to Joe's mother's tailoring shop from the film. That's true, but I was really focused on the fact that they're going to custom make me a cocktail right, 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 uh, right, 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 at, right, right, at the right. table. Uh, you've got portholes, which is a, a great joke. But the other thing that caught my eye was the half note smoked old fashioned, which a smoked old fashioned, delicious on its own. Even better when you know that the half note was a real jazz club in New York City, and it's also referenced in Seoul. So Easter eggs all over the place. <sighs> Wait, they also have Zapolis. Are those like donuts? Ah, uh, like if, if a donut and a beignet had a baby. All right, I'll try it. A donier. Hmm. A bin nut. I like Donier's better. Me too. Also, they had some musicians in here a few minutes ago that were crushing, so this is going to be a good place for live music as well. And they have a dance floor? Oh, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. One of these tailorings, and I'll be out there. All right, I got the half-note smoked old-fashioned, which, first of all, five stars for presentation. It came in a very cool, dramatic box with smoke, and it was awesome. It's made out of Old Statesman bourbon and uh, smoked cinnamon. That is a very good old fashioned. Very classic tasting. I thought the cinnamon would have a stronger flavor, but it doesn't really. It just adds that little bit of spice. Not sweet at all, which is how I prefer an old fashioned. And you can taste that smoky flavor. That is a very good cocktail. I predict we will be back here. And I picked up the custom Manhattan because I felt really fancy. And this is an incredibly cool experience because they actually roll out a table side cart where one of the bartenders walks you through how to make a Manhattan or a martini, depending on your poison, in front of you. Um, we loved Craig, who was our bartender, got us involved, but this is Blanton's bourbon, a little bit of sweet vermouth. I got to choose which bitters I wanted, and I got barrel-aged bitters, uh, some dirty cherries, and it was even perfumed over top with YSL. Top two, maybe the best Manhattan I've ever had. It is strong. It's a, it's a martini style beverage, so it's just liquor that you're drinking. The Blanton shines. It is aromatic. It has a whole. It has a little bit of floral taste on the back end. I uh, I don't really know what else to say other than that this is perhaps the best Manhattan I've ever had, and. I'm gonna sip on it and enjoy it and savor it and come back and try the other bourbons because what they've done here is given you as a guest a really unique way to enjoy a great classic cocktail. Well, that wraps up a great first day aboard the Disney Magic. What was your favorite thing today? Soul Cat Lounge, you took, hands down. Yeah, you took mine, I knew you were gonna say that, but that's okay, because I also loved Animator's Palette when Mickey came out, that was really special. It was amazing. <laughs> so cute. Well, we are headed to bed for the evening. It's been a wonderful and fantastic day, but it's time for, time for some sleeps. We got a lot more fun on the Disney Magic tomorrow. That video will be out in a few days as well, so hopefully you'll watch that one too. And in the meantime, folks, feel free to like and subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation, find us on Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Mom. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. On the magic. Literally. Wow. Yeah. I wonder what towel animal we got. <laughs>